My name is Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com and today I'm going to show you how I built this DIY concrete gas fire pit table. So the first thing that I'm going to do to get started with this project is I'm actually going to work on the top first and I'm going to be building it out of melamine. I'm going to make a form that's going to be about two inches thick and it's going to have a knockout in the middle for where the fire insert is going to be. This fire insert, I got a big one and it was really expensive. It's not a super cheap DIY build, but I'm building something that would normally cost thousands and thousands of dollars to buy. So spending a little bit of money is reasonable, I think. If you're looking for a super cheap build, this isn't it. But if you want something that's gonna be really cool, and really nice, then stick around. This build is based off of a set of design plans that I got from Yard Zen, which you guys can check out. I did a video on how I'm working to overhaul my entire backyard space, and this is one part of it, but it's kind of based on their initial design, and I've made some modifications to better fit what I want it to be. So I'm ripping some pieces of melamine on the table saw, and then I'll put it all together with some screws, and then silicone the inside so that it's a nice, clean form. I have some other videos on how I've done concrete tops and stuff before, like my custom concrete sink, stuff like that. So if you wanna check those out, I'll make sure to leave links to those. Basically, you're just making a two inch thick form, putting some wire mesh inside of it. And then you can mix up some concrete and put that in there, vibrate it really well, and get yourself a nice solid top. The concrete mix that I'm using for this project is the Quickcrete Pro Finish 5000 and I need about a bag and a half for the top. I also want it to be like a dark charcoal looking thing, so I'm gonna be using two bottles of the Quickcrete charcoal dye to darken it up. And you can grab all this stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot. Once it's all mixed up, from there, it's just a matter of adding it into the form. And once it's in place, I found that the best way to get a nice finish is to vibrate the hell out of it with a Sawzall without the blade in it. I like to just press it up against the form all over the place and let it run for a few minutes. And from there, I'll just cover the whole thing up in plastic and let it cure for about 24 to 48 hours. All right, so this concrete has been setting up for like a day, a day and a half, and now I'm gonna pop it loose and see what we've got. To get it out of the forms, I'm just taking out all the screws and then I'm using a couple different tools to try and pry the sides off. Most of it comes apart pretty easy, but the middle bit is a little bit tricky. I used hot glue to hold the pieces in place rather than using screws or something. So I could just kind of knock out the pieces rather than trying to pry too hard against the fresh concrete. I don't want to crack it or leave a chunk in it or anything. And fortunately, this looks pretty good as is. So I'm going to pop it loose. I'll hit it with a little bit of a slurry coat, which is more of the same kind of thing. It's just Portland cement and I dyed it to kind of match the color of the concrete that I mixed up. And now that that part's all finished, I'm gonna try my hand at trying to polish this concrete for the first time. I've never tried to polish anything concrete before, but I've seen some beautiful results for it. So I'm gonna try and polish it using this cheap angle grinder polishing set that I got off of Amazon. Everything that I bought on Amazon, I've put together into a list that you can find on my Amazon store. It's an affiliate store, so it helps me out anytime you make a purchase. So if you wanna see all the stuff that I bought off of Amazon for this project, make sure that you click that link and it'll take you over there and show you all the different things that I bought. Okay, so the top is just about finished. I just have to apply a wet look sealer to it, but I'm gonna forego that for now and I'm gonna shift gears and I'm gonna start working on the base. Because this is a fire pit, I'm gonna be building the frame for it out of these metal two by fours. I don't have a ton of experience working with them because they're primarily used for commercial and high rise or multifamily apartment applications, but they're also widely available at big box stores. So I'm gonna be building the base in kind of two stages. There's gonna be the very bottom, which will be a little bit narrower and smaller. And then there'll be the second part, which will be the wider and taller base that sits on top of the bottom piece. The overall footprint of the whole base is gonna be 24 inches wide by 48 inches long and 16 inches tall. I'm using my angle grinder to cut the framing because I found that it was a little bit faster and easier than using the metal shears. And then I'm using a clamp to secure it in place and screwing it all together with self-tapping metal screws. I'm also mocking up a place where I can put the firebox control valve and igniter assembly, which you can find which one that I used on that Amazon list that I just mentioned before. So this fire pit is gonna be connected to a natural gas line that I ran when I built the retaining walled kind of seating area. So if you're planning to use a propane tank, 
You might have to modify the height of the table a little bit or add an access door so that you can easily swap out the tank when you need to. Now that I've got the frame all built, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in Wonderboard Lite, which is a cement backer board that allows you to add tile and stone easily. And it's also really lightweight and easy to cut. Originally, I was planning to do kind of a smooth charcoal stucco finish on this whole fire pit. But after looking online, I found some charcoal stack stone tile at Lowe's that I liked better. And I thought that it might be a little bit easier to do. So what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some thin set mortar and some the charcoal dye that I used earlier to match the top. And I'm applying a layer over the entire frame. It probably isn't necessary to apply the dye or do a full scratch coat since I'm deciding to go with the tile, but I figure if there's any areas that the stone doesn't cover, it's not gonna stand out or catch your eye. So before I add the tile, I'm gonna move the table into place so that it doesn't become too unbearably heavy and I'll just tile the whole thing in place. I'm using a piece of scrap two x four underneath the lip around the base to act as a lower stop to hold the tiles in place while the first row of mortar sets up and again, I'm using more of that charcoal dyed mortar to secure the tiles in place. So now it's just a matter of me working my way all the way around all four sides and cutting off any excess with a diamond cutoff wheel on my angle grinder. Now that the tiles are set and in place, I'm gonna apply a wet look sealer to the whole base, put the top in place. I'm also going to apply the same wet look sealer to the top and then I can connect all the gas lines and hoses to the firebox control and to the fire tray assembly. From there, it's just a matter of turning the gas line on, filling the fire tray with the fire glass, firing it up, and this project is complete. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something and I hope it inspired you to tackle your own fire pit table. This is the first fire table that I've ever built, so if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of the content I put out. And as always, you can check out all my how-to and home improvement projects on my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.